Welcome back guys. So if you've been watching many of the videos lately, you know that we finally wrapped up the SL750 as far as all the mechanical needs goes. So that means it's time to start on different videos. And this one was kind of unplanned. One of my friends knew somebody that was looking to get rid of another jet ski. It was an older one. They've got some newer ones and just wanted to get the older one out of the way. So what we have is a 1995 Yamaha Wave Venture. This was the first year that the Wave Venture came out. It was basically marketed as a big jet ski that was for the whole family. Supposedly a three-seater, could hold like 580-some pounds, I think. The unfortunate thing is, in the later years of the Wave Ventures, they even had an 1100 out. Unfortunately, this one, being as it's a 95, only came with one motor option, and that is the two-cylinder 700, or 701 to be perfectly correct. Now, even though it is only 700, it's not incredibly underwhelming. These did go high 40 mile per hour and had about 80 horsepower, so they could still tow a bunch. But the problem is they're about 12 feet long and weigh close to 600 pounds. So they're very heavy, which isn't the end of the world. It'll be a great machine for somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience riding. And see, so you got the big wide sponsons here. This whole hull is just huge and should be very stable from all the videos I've seen. One other kind of interesting thing about this one that none of the other older jet skis I have are equipped with is reverse. So it's got this manual lever here on the side and you can kind of hear that actuating, but it's all just off of a cable. And to show you guys how that works, so you got your nozzle back here, kind of how you would on these other ones, except there's kind of this extra sort of chute here. You can see the nozzle, the plastic nozzle is way back here, like how you'd see on a lot of these other ones I've got that are equipped with. But then it's got this hood up here on the top. And so when you actuate this lever into reverse, it closes this hood and basically forces the water out that way and pushes you into reverse. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the, that's the best way I can kind of describe it. So aside from this thing being very dirty, I did kind of already scrape some of the paint off. It looked like they had it in their garage maybe and then dumped like a bucket of white paint on it. You can see here, I was able to get quite a bit of it off. It's definitely dirty, sat probably underneath some trees for a while. There's a lot of dirt in here, but the engine compartment itself really doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty clean. I'm not seeing any oil like all splattered all over the place. So the thing really doesn't look that bad. Of course it doesn't start, no battery in it or anything like that. But for the most part, I think it might be a pretty solid ski. They claim that it ran just fine last year. Had no reason to kind of BS me on that because the thing was free. They just wanted it out of their yard. And I really didn't care if it did run or not. One thing I did notice though, I think something may have got dropped on it because it's almost like the handlebar steering stem may be snapped in half or something. I'm not sure, I've never seen anything like that before, but it's definitely, something is broken or completely disconnected in there. So I'll have to pull that apart and check it out. So I'm starting to get some more stuff off of the ski. In the front, we're looking pretty good. Looks like maybe some mildew. I don't know exactly what that is. It may just be dirt down in there. Yeah, it's almost just like some grease. So the hole's really pretty clean up here. However, when I got back to here, pulled that huge compartment out and it looks like it's almost been submerged before or something. There's rust all over everything covering the battery. The battery looks like it might be even original to this jet ski. I mean, that is an ancient battery, but there's just rust colored, just residue all over everything. It's really like fine and dusty. Same with back here in the engine compartment, all in here. So hopefully this thing was not submerged and the motor's not locked up. I haven't even checked to see if the motor will even spin because I knew it didn't, well, I didn't assume it had a battery. And then looking at this, it has a battery, but it's just not very functional, so. I'm gonna continue tearing this apart. I kind of figured out something about the steering up in here. You can see those two places where it looks like bolts can thread into. There's nothing there. And it looks like there's almost supposed to be some type of bracket because right here is the steering post and it's completely loose. So 
I don't see anything broken. It just looks like there's something missing, which I guess is good because it should be easy enough to get that fixed. I got the battery out and I just had to show you guys this because this is, I've never seen this before. This is the most extreme corrosion on a battery I've ever seen. That is what is left of the positive terminal. Just nothing. There's nothing there. I'm pretty sure I could almost dig to the center of the battery. I mean, that is what used to be the positive battery terminal. And then there's the negative. It was had a lot of corrosion on it for sure, but at least it's still intact. There is no positive battery terminal though. That is absolutely wild. I have no idea what happened to this thing, but this rust all over it is very interesting. It really acts like it was submerged because I mean, to get this rusty residue on plastic, it's almost like it had to have been all floating in the water and then have been drained out and then just kind of settled all over everything. Unfortunately, I was saying that I didn't think anything was broken and there were just pieces missing, but here's the kind of the steering post, which ended up breaking three of the wheels bolts off in this, which that'll be easy to get those out, put new bolts in there. But what holds that steering post all together is completely fragmented, all in pieces, completely busted apart. Nowhere on any of the OEM parts places makes anything to replace that, but fortunately you do have people on eBay that like to salvage these old things and let people keep the stuff running, so I was able to find for I think 26 bucks the whole steering post mount assembly, so that's what we got there. There's a clamp that goes around that. And essentially what you can see happened with this other one is that whole tube section just kind of fragmented all around there at the base. So we got the whole new setup. We'll get that thrown on there. That'll fix that issue. At this point, I kind of got to get all that put back together because all the wires are all apart over in there. Nothing's actually attached, so I couldn't start it right now, even though I did pull a battery out and have it ready to go to actually test this thing. So I'll go ahead and throw all this back together. I've got everything loosely put together and I'm going to be kind of surprised if it even does do anything regardless of if the motor is actually locked up or not because those cables for the battery are so corroded that I'm kind of doubting they're going to even pull any, let any current to flow, but we're going to go and try it out. Plus side it does turn over, but we got some issues going on back here. So. These people never bothered to clear the water out of this thing. And when we picked it up, it was sitting outside and it was in the middle of winter. So I'm really hoping nothing froze and destroyed this thing. I mean, there was a lot of water that came gushing out of this machine. Since we do know that it will turn over and it sounds pretty decent when it turns over, the next thing I'm going to do before I actually try to get it to start, since it didn't start right off, is we're going to go ahead and pull the plugs out and do a quick compression check just to see if it's got anything. This plug definitely looks dirty. It looks very oily, and I'd almost say it looks a bit rusty, but I'm hoping not. I definitely don't think that the engine was... The engine obviously was not seized, which is good. But that doesn't mean that can't still have problems. We got right at 140 in this cylinder. Great compression. So that's essentially perfect compression. Try it again. Get a little lower compression in this one. Say so about 135. Either way, there's nothing weird going on here that should be causing them up to start compression related. For anybody that's going to come after me, this starting fluid does have lubricant in it, so we're not going to tear anything up too badly.
I guess that answers that question. Now that I verified that the thing does run, got the steering post replaced, got all that taken care of, got the major mechanical problems all resolved. Although I think we do need to get some new spark plugs in this thing. And then additionally, the fuel fill hose also has a crack kind of right around where the hose clamp went at the very top. I was hoping it was just a small surface crack, but it is cracked all the way through. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and patch that with some Permatex though. You can't find these new anywhere online, and I couldn't find any used ones on eBay. We got a local shop here that makes hoses and all kinds of stuff like that, so maybe I can get them to make me something if using Permatex doesn't fix that. Aside from that though, this thing really does seem like a pretty good runner. It's obviously absolutely filthy and disgusting still. These seats are completely trashed. The outside of the hull looks like it has almost like some calcified type of buildup going on all around it. Traction mats are completely destroyed. So next video, we're going to be making this thing look as close to brand new as we can.